So Happy New Year. Happy New Year. It's a new start. Blank slate. As I said last night during our Burning Bowl service, there's nothing innately magical about turning that page on the calendar or flipping that page wherever you do it, electronically, on paper, or whatever. I'm old-fashioned, so I like to think about flipping the page. So there's nothing innately magical about that, but there's something in our culture, something in our consciousness about it, isn't it? Something about this new beginning, new opportunity, new possibility, new potential that we look forward to as we begin a new year. Last night, we got the opportunity to release and let go of the things that are holding us back from really living that full potential. Not that you have to do it at the end of the year. You can do it any time. You can do it every day. But releasing that and holding that vision, and we got to create a vision. It's so important for us as we move forward to catch a vision for where we're going. What is ours to do? What do we desire? And allowing that desire to be born deep within us, to connect with what it is our souls want to do, what does our soul want to experience and express? Because I do believe we all have something that we want to experience and express. Or let me put it another way. I think we all have something that spirit or the divine wants to have expressed through us. And our opportunity is to get in touch with that and to live that. You know, it doesn't have to be a huge thing. But there's something that we can envision for ourselves as we move forward in this new year. And so I encourage you to do that if you haven't already done that, put that on paper and allow yourself to have the vision for what it is. And sometimes I do believe putting it down on paper, allowing yourself, and, I, you know, I, and I'm kind of old-fashioned that way too, I like writing it out. I like feeling the energy flow through my hand onto the paper as I use an old-fashioned pencil <laughs> to write it out. Something important for me in that. But I think it's important, it is important for us to have a vision, an idea, a concept of what it is that we want to create. But I think that's really just the beginning. I think we have to then do something to put that into action. How do we do that? Um, <laughs> so I'm going to share with you this morning some motherly advice as you go into this year. Three pieces of motherly advice you may have heard your mother say at one point or another, maybe not. But the first one is one that not in, my mother didn't say it, but Jay's mother did. Quite often he would tell me, and we'd say it to each other quite often, which is, remember who you are. He said every time he would go out the door to school or wherever, his mother would say, remember who you are. Now, she may not have meant it in the way I mean it. She may have meant, you better go out there and know that you are representing this family, so you better know what you better <laughs> be sure that you remember who you are. And don't embarrass me <laughs> or your father. I think that may be what she meant by that. But what I mean by that is for us to remember who we really are. And I think it's so important as we move into whatever it is that we are here to remember our truth. Remember our divinity, the light, the power, the presence. I was reminded this morning of a, of a book uh, by Father Richard Rohr called Immortal Diamond. I, I love really anything and everything that Richard Rohr writes. I had the pleasure of 
Jay and I had the pleasure of meeting him and being in a small group with him a couple of years ago. But this is something he says, there is something in you that is not touched by coming and going, by up and down, for or against, by raucous teams of totally right or totally wrong. There is a part of you that is patient with both goodness and evil to gradually show themselves exactly as God does. There is a part of you that does not rush to judgment. Rather, it stands vigilant and patient in the tragic gap that almost every moment offers. It is a riverbed of mercy. It is a vast, silent, restful, and resourceful, and it receives and also lets go of all the comings and goings. It is awareness itself. In her interior castle, St. Teresa of Avila says, the soul is spacious, plentiful, and its amplitude is impossible to exaggerate. The sun here radiates to every part, and nothing can diminish its beauty. This is your soul. This is God in you. This is your true self. And so as we remember who we are, it is about thinking. The power of our thought. We talk about that quite a bit in unity. There is power in our thinking. There's power in what we believe. There's power because what we understand about thought is thought is energy. Thought is vibration. It doesn't stop right here when we're thinking about ourselves, when we're having thoughts about ourselves, that we're limited or that we're not enough or that we're too old or we're too young or we're too fat or we're too thin or we're not educated enough or whatever it is that we're thinking about ourselves. We think that it may be confined here, but it's not confined here. It is. It goes out into the universal creative medium and it, in the vibration, attracts like a vibration. Do you see what we think? What you think about comes about. Thoughts of like attract thoughts of like quality. So when we're thinking thoughts about ourselves, that we are limiting ourselves, guess what happens? We attract other thoughts that are of like vibration, like energy. And that begins to build. And so our opportunity is to remember, we talked last night a little about denial and affirmation. Denial simply means to deny the power of that, deny the truth of that, deny that there's any, you're going to allow that to define you. Because it is a thought. And the vibration of a thought can be transformed, it can be transmuted, it can be changed But our opportunity is to do what we can to release ourselves from those limiting thoughts about ourselves and begin to affirm who we truly are. That is the power of denial and affirmation, and it is a practice. It is a spiritual practice. And what I want to stress for us today, and for myself as well, is that It's called practice for a reason. Because we get to practice it every day. These things don't happen for us magically. It requires our participation, our commitment to being aware of those thoughts of limitation and lie. Remember who you are. Remember whose you are. Remember you are an expression of the divine, endowed with all the power and the potential of the divine. Do you know that? Is it scary to say, I am God expressing, or I am an expression of God? Is it scary for you to say that? It might be. But it's so important for us to recognize that we are that. It really, truly, I believe, begins there. 
Remember who you are. And it's not just about thinking. It's also about feeling it. Having the experience of it. Who I am as a powerful being of light and love and creativity. The spark of God. The spark of the divine I am. And feel into that. We talk in unity quite a bit in new thought about how we create our reality or how we experience reality. We talk a lot about thinking, but now we understand that it's about thinking and feeling. Remember who you are in thought and remember who you are in feeling nature. Embrace that. Embody that. You're the light of the world. And it's not, you know, Jesus said, you are the light of the world. Let your light so shine before all that God, your Father, as he called it, might be glorified. And I think that's an important piece. Because it's not about ego attachment. Well, aren't I wonderful? Aren't I special? It's not about that. It's really about surrendering all of that and letting the light that is the divine express as you so that you are in service to the divine. You're in service to God, source, life itself. That's who you are. It's not about being attached to an idea of self. Not about spiritualizing your ego, it's about being spirit and allowing spirit to have its life as you. Because it's who you are. So remember who you are when you walk out the door in the morning. Remember who you are when you get up in the morning. <laughs> we were watching, I um, was just thinking about this, we were watching Kennedy Center, Center Honors, the recording of that last night. And Amy Grant was one of the recipients this year. One of the great, you know, singer, songwriter, pop, Christian. She said, sometimes I like to think of myself as a flat garden hose. <clears throat> and when I go out in the morning, I remember that what I share with the world is what I plug into the, on the other side. So what are we plugging into? What are we plugging our hose into? Are we plugging our hose into the idea of God expressing as us? Are we plugging our hose into our creativity? Are we plugging our hose into being that vessel, being the one, being in the flow of that life? Because that's really who we are. Remember who you are. Now, this is a mother, piece of motherly, I'm going to say advice, that I did hear from my mother. Well, she didn't ever say it to me, but I heard her say it to my sister. You better watch your mouth. Now, I was never a smart aleck. I never said anything that, you know, was, was being a smart aleck. But again, my sister did quite often. So I heard her say, you better watch your mouth. Well, that's what she meant by that. You better be careful what you say. You better not be a smart aleck. You better not. But it's such an important piece of advice as we live into this new year because what we speak is creative. What comes out of our mouth is imbued with energy. And sometimes I think we don't recognize that. We don't realize how powerful our words can be. I'm going to share another short reading with you. This is from Florence Scovel Shin. Many of you may be familiar with her. She wrote The Game of Life and How to Play It, and this is actually from a book that she wrote called The Power of the Spoken Word. And in, she, in it she says, Linked with God power, all things are possible. 
by your word, you contact this power. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. Watch your words with diligence. You are continually reaping the fruits of your words. Jesus Christ said, All power is given unto me to bring heaven upon the earth. This God power is within you. To bring heaven upon the earth. What do you find yourself saying? I'm going to start again, going back, remember who you are. What do you find yourself saying about yourself? What words come out of your mouth when speaking about yourself? Are they words that are uplifting? Are they words of encouragement? Are they words of empowerment? Or are they words that are somehow disempowering? What are the words we're speaking when we're watching the news on television? What are the words we're speaking when we see something or someone that we disagree with or someone that we radically disagree with? Are the words that are coming out of our mouth words of criticism, words of, or were they words of blessing? Now again, recognize that I'm speaking directly to myself here as well. Our words have power. Has any, I'm guessing maybe, I'm wondering, have you ever had someone say something to you that was very hurtful? It was painful to hear. When you think about those words, you may not remember exactly what was said, but I bet you remember the feeling. I bet you can recall what it felt like to hear those words. And so I think it's important for us to recognize that the words that we speak, what we put out through our words, stays in the field. No matter what we do to try to take them back, no matter how much we want to apologize, no matter what we do to try to ease the pain, and that may help, but the pain that our words can cause really do affect other people. And what I want to say to us is that even if the person that we are speaking about is not necessarily in earshot of what we're saying, I believe those words still impact that person. Because in consciousness there is no space or time. Now, I'm not saying to us that we're supposed to take whatever comes at us, that we're supposed to be a doormat, that somehow we're not supposed to speak our truth. I'm not saying that at all because I think that's important as well. But our opportunity is to choose consciously the words that we speak, how we're going to respond. Viktor Frankl said, and I'm just paraphrasing, I know, but there is a space between stimulus and response, and in that space, we get to choose our response. And so I go back to remember who you are, remember who you are, but also I'm going to say remember who the other person is, truly. They too are expressions of the divine. And when we are centered in God, when we are centered in that awareness of who we truly are, who the other one truly is, I don't believe we're going to say words that are damning 
We may speak our truth. We may say what my experience is. I may say to you what I'm available for, what I'm not available for, but I'm not going to say those words in a way that are damning to you, hurtful to you, blaming of you. Does that make sense, the difference? I think it's important for us to watch our words because they can be and they are creative. They're powerful. They're imbued with very powerful energy. We have the power to curse or bless. And blessing simply just means to confer goodness or confer compassion or love on someone else. So remember who you are. Remember who the other person is. Watch what you say about yourself. Watch what you say about others. Watch what you say to others. And the more we do that, I believe the more, as the quote said, we bring heaven to the earth. We bring that consciousness to the earth. And the third piece of motherly advice that I think is so important for us as we are moving forward in our lives into this new year, into this blank slate, is something that I do think my mother used to say to me, and that is, you best behave. Best not be cutting up. Best not be playing the fool. Anybody can behave. And what I mean by that, not that, not just, you know, be good, you know, you've got to follow, you've got to do everything I say. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying, though, is that along with our thinking, along with our feeling, along with our words, our actions matter. What we do matters. And the energy with which we do it matters. So it's important to recognize that as we are creating, we talk a lot about thinking and feeling. We talk a lot about the power of the word. But I want to say to us that we don't often enough talk about the power of what we do or don't do. Again, are we doing from a place of being? Are we allowing our beingness, our true self, to come through our actions, everything that we do? Now, I get it. That can be sometimes a tall order. But I do believe if we are the ones who are going to make a difference in this world, if we are going to bring that consciousness of love and peace and joy and compassion and all the good that we can imagine God to be, if we understand that we are the vessels through our thinking, through our feeling, through our words, we also understand that we are the vessels through our actions. Every step we take. matters. And I believe that is the true work of our spiritual journey. To be aware. To be aware of the energy, the consciousness with which we are living. Because what we're going to create out there depends on all of it. Not just in your life specifically. And that is where we begin. In my life, your life, what am I thinking, feeling? What am I speaking? What am I doing? And it affects your life. But we, none of us live and lives in isolation. Everything we think, everything we feel, everything we say, everything we do impacts the whole. 
And I think sometimes we forget that. Because what I create in my own consciousness, you know, we think about that sometimes as well. Here I am, and all I'm responsible for is my consciousness, and that's all you can be responsible for. But we forget that we're not separate. It looks like we are. I'm standing here right now, and you're sitting there, and you're sitting there, and you're sitting there, and it looks like we're separate. But if we open ourselves up to the recognition of the energy which, which, with which is we are living and the energy that is all around us, we could see that in this field there's no separation. We all impact each other. So as we begin this new adventure of 2023, I invite you to be very clear about connecting with spirit, to catch that vision, to be an open vessel, be aware of what you're plugging into, what you're expressing. Remember who you are, consciously thinking, feeling. Be aware of what you're saying, the energy that is going out from you. And then, Really be conscious of what you're doing. Is everything you're doing imbued with love? Is everything you're doing imbued with love? And if not, don't beat yourself up. Just stop. Remember who you are and make a different choice. Make a different choice. So today, we are also participating in, uh, I think it may just be a unity ritual called the white stone ceremony. Does everybody get a white stone and a marker when you came in? If not, uh, Wesley has some to give you. And the ceremony actually comes from... Uh, it, it's an ancient ritual that actually comes from Revelation, the book of Revelation, where John talks about in his vision, he talks about when someone is imprisoned for some reason, that when they are set free, they're given a white stone with a new name. And the name comes from the divine. And it is a name that only the person who receives it knows. And so we use this ceremony as an outer expression of our willingness to accept our freedom and our willingness to receive a new name. And when we talk about name, it's not a name necessarily like Joe or Bob or Susie, but a nature, a quality, a divine idea that we are allowing to be revealed to us. So we take an opportunity to go within, which I'll guide us through in just a minute, to go within and deeply listen for spirit. And then as we receive something, we write it on the stone. There are two sides to the stone, so you can write more than one word. You can even write on the, the edges of them, I guess, if you get more than one word. But to write that word or words on the stone, and the, it's a, and the stone is actually something you can keep with you all year. In your pocket, your purse, your backpack, whatever, leave it on your desk or whatever, your counter to remind you. This is my new nature. This is a way that I'm, li what I'm living into this year, what I'm choosing to manifest this year. And allow it to be a reminder for you.